Since the 1950s, scientists have known that there are radio wave emissions in the vicinity of Jupiter, but detecting the source of these emissions has not been a simple task. However, NASA recently announced that they have officially discovered a radio wave source coming from a moon of Jupiter, namely Ganymede. So, what does this radio signal imply? Could it be a signal from an extraterrestrial civilization? All of these questions will be explained in today's video. Jupiter, also known as the ringed planet, is the fifth planet from the Sun. It is a giant gas sphere with an average radius of approximately 69,911 kilometers, about 11 times the radius of the Earth. With such a massive size, Jupiter is often referred to as the big brother of the solar system. Not only does it possess a colossal size, but Jupiter is also known for having the most moons in the solar system, with an impressive count of 92. Since the development of science and technology, humans have applied radio wave transmission technology. This technology enables us to identify objects using wireless waves, allowing a device to read information from a chip at a considerable distance without direct contact or any other physical interaction. Therefore, radio waves are always considered a product of intelligent minds. This concept has led astronomers to consider searching for extraterrestrial radio wave sources to explore civilizations beyond Earth. From the implementation of this idea until now, we've built an army of powerful radio telescopes, like the ones you see behind me, scanning the skies in search of those elusive signals. It's like tuning in to the cosmic radio station of the universe. But detecting the source of Jupiter's radio emissions has been like finding a needle in a cosmic haystack, until now. But recently, during its mission around Jupiter, the Juno spacecraft detected a radio emission. At that moment, Juno was traveling at a speed of approximately 180 kilometers per hour, and it captured a wireless signal for five seconds with the frequency range of 10 to 40 megahertz. Although the radio wave emission lasted for a very short time, it was enough for Juno to determine its origin. Based on its findings, NASA announced that it originated from Jupiter's moon, Ganymede. Now the question remains, is this a signal from an extraterrestrial civilization? Let's continue our exploration to find out. When NASA scientists analyzed this wireless signal more closely, they concluded that it is not a product of intelligent life, but rather a natural phenomenon. They further explain that the signal originates from electrons in an electromagnetic field, causing the electrons to oscillate at a much slower rate than their rotation. As a result, all the electromagnetic and radio waves in the vicinity can be amplified. Therefore, when the Juno spacecraft passed through this region, it captured those radio signals. Nevertheless, this is the first time scientists have discovered a radio signal from a moon of Jupiter, providing them with a better understanding of radio signals found around Jupiter. As for Ganymede, it is the largest moon of Jupiter and also the largest moon in the solar system. If Ganymede orbited the Sun instead of Jupiter, it would almost certainly be regarded as a bona fide planet, owing to several reasons. The primary factor is its impressive size, boasting a diameter of 3,270 miles, which exceeds that of Mercury by approximately 8%, with a diameter of 3,032 miles. Mars, the most renowned planet and a sought-after destination for space exploration missions, has a diameter of only 4,212 miles, making it only marginally larger than Ganymede. Nevertheless, a notable distinction between Ganymede and the planets lies in its significantly lower mass compared to Mercury or Mars. Similar to Jupiter's moon Europa, Ganymede's composition consists mostly of water and ice. Consequently, the surface gravity on Ganymede is considerably weaker in relation to its substantial diameter. Scientists have long known that Ganymede possesses a differentiated body with a rich iron core and deep within its interior lies a vast ocean. It is estimated that this ocean may contain more water than all the oceans on Earth combined, making it potentially the largest ocean in the solar system. Since the discovery of Ganymede's subterranean ocean, there have been speculations about the possibility of life inhabiting this region, but to date, no signs of life have been found. 
located at a distance of 1,070,400 kilometers from Jupiter. Ganymede is the third moon in order of proximity to Jupiter. At this distance, it has an orbital period of approximately 7.15 Earth days, meaning it takes Ganymede seven days and three hours to complete one orbit around Jupiter. Similar to Earth's moon, Ganymede is tidally locked to Jupiter, with one face of the moon always facing Jupiter, while the other face remains perpetually hidden from view if one were standing on Jupiter. However, of course, you wouldn't have the opportunity to do so because Jupiter is a gas planet and you cannot stand on its surface. From 1995 to 2000, the Galileo spacecraft on its exploration mission flew past Ganymede, the moon of Jupiter, six times. During these encounters, the spacecraft detected magnetic moments on Ganymede that exist independently of Jupiter's magnetic field. The strength of these magnetic moments is about 10 times greater than that of Earth's magnetic field. This phenomenon has created a magnetic envelope around Ganymede, making it the only moon in the solar system with a strong enough magnetic field to generate its own magnetosphere. According to calculations, the radius of the region enclosed by Ganymede's magnetosphere is about four to five times larger than the moon itself. The interaction between Ganymede's magnetosphere and Jupiter's magnetic field is similar to the interaction between Earth's magnetosphere and solar wind. Moving plasma particles rotating along with Jupiter collide with Ganymede's surface in the opposite direction of its rotation, resulting in an effect similar to the collision of solar wind with Earth's magnetosphere. Some scientists suggest that Ganymede's magnetosphere may be due to its molten iron core. However, others argue that, with its modest size, Ganymede's core has cooled to a certain temperature where it cannot sustain motion in a liquid metal state, thus unable to maintain a strong magnetic field. Nevertheless, the presence of a relatively strong magnetosphere surrounding Ganymede remains the subject of debate among scientists, and further research is needed to understand this phenomenon. As we ponder the wonders of Ganymede, it's important to remember that science is a continuous journey. Our understanding evolves with every new discovery. Who knows what secrets this enigmatic moon and its radio signals will reveal next? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more mind-expanding space content. And as always, feel free to share your thoughts and theories in the comments below.